Okay, so welcome back to this next video. We have so far seen that transforming growth factor beta will bind to the transforming growth factor beta receptor, which is made up of a dimer of the type 1 TGF beta receptor and the type 2 TGF beta receptor. Okay, we've then seen that that binding will activate the serine threonine kinase of the type 2 TGF beta receptor, which will then add a phosphate group onto the serine threonine kinase of the type 1 TGF beta receptor. Okay, and that will now activate this serine threonine kinase of the type 1 TGF beta receptor. Now what we're talking about is what happens next. What is this going to phosphorylate, basically? And it's going to phosphorylate a protein known as R-SHMAD. Okay, and R-SHMAD uh, can either be uh, one of two proteins. It can either be SHMAD2, okay, so SHMAD2 is an example of an R-SHMAD, or it can be SHMAD3. Okay, so that's nice and easy to remember. So uh, when we say R-SHMAD, we mean either SHMAD2 or SHMAD3. A SHMAD which interacts with the receptor is what that R is for. So sometimes people will just write SHMAD2 uh, slash 3 to denote that either it's SHMAD2 or it's SHMAD3. Okay? It doesn't mean that it's some sort of chimera of both of them. It just denotes that it's one or the other. Okay, so here comes uh, SHMAD2 uh, or 3. And it's going to basically be phosphorylated by the active serine threonine kinase of the type 1 uh, transforming growth factor beta receptor. Okay, so this is going to come over here. And it's going to be phosphorylated by uh, this um, uh, serine threonine kinase of the type 1 TGF beta receptor. And when it is phosphorylated, it changes conformation. So I've drawn it sort of... Uh, uh, linearizing out rather than being bent over like this. So that's how I'm going to denote the change in conformation. Okay, so this is the R SHMAD now that it's got its phosphate groups um, stuck onto it. And now, once it's got the phosphate group of it on it, it cleaves away from this um, this serine threonine kinase of the type 1 TGF beta receptor, and it's going to go and interact with another SHMAD protein. Okay, so uh, this SHMAD. Uh, 2 or 3 that's now phosphorylated. Let's draw it coming down here. Okay, so the, here's our SHMAD2 slash 3 that's now phosphorylated. Okay, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to form a complex uh, with another SHMAD protein. So um, in comes another SHMAD protein, which I'll draw here, which is SHMAD4, SMAD4. Or, uh, I think it's always been pronounced SHMAD. Uh, SMAD uh, might be another way of saying it. SMAD probably sounds more sensible, actually. Maybe I'll start saying SMAD. So SMAD, um, SMAD4, which I'm going to denote in orange here, is going to come down and it's going to form a complex with SMAD2-3, um, which is phosphorylated. Okay, so here is SMAD2-3, or the R-SMAD. Okay, right, so we've now got this complex of both of them, and that basically is a transcription factor. So let me just label everything up. So this is SMAD4, SMAD4 here, and this blue SMAD is the R SMAD, which means SMAD2 slash 3. Okay, right. So, this complex of the R SMAD with the SMAD4 is now going to act as a transcription factor. So, it's going to go into the nucleus of the cell. So, let's draw the nucleus here. Okay, and it's going to interact with the DNA in the nucleus. So, let's say this is some DNA. Basically, uh, in front of all genes, upstream of every gene in the human genome, there is what is known as a promoter region. And the promoter region is a non-coding portion of DNA, i.e. it's not involved in the transcription and translation process for making the protein. It will not actually be involved in coding for the protein. Instead, what it is involved in is controlling the expression of the gene. So, um, let's say this box here, this bigger box that I'm drawing now, represents the gene. Okay, so this is the portion of DNA which you're actually going to uh, transcribe into a piece of mRNA and then that piece of mRNA will be spliced and then it will go through the process of translation where it will be turned into um, a polypeptide. Okay, well where it will um, act as the template on which a polypeptide is built. Okay, so this is our gene. Now upstream of that gene is this region known as a promoter region. 
Okay, so I'll draw it in pink here. So this pink region represents what's known as a promoter region, or a promoter box, some people call it. So this is the promoter region. Now, basically, if you want to um, transcribe your gene, if you want to turn your gene into a piece of mRNA which carries the genetic code of that gene, uh, then uh, you need to basically get your RNA polymerase enzyme into the DNA and it needs to uh, move along the coding strand of the DNA. Um, and I should just mention what a coding strand is. So you've got two complementary strands in your DNA. Uh, one of them will be used to make the mRNA from, the other will not. I, that, that, this one that I've drawn in blue is the one potentially the RNA polymerase will use to um, make the mRNA, and it will not use the other one. So it will always use this blue one, which is known as the coding strand. And basically, it will make a piece of mRNA that's complementary to the coding strand, and therefore has the same sequence of organic bases as the non-coding strand. So it won't ever make a piece of mRNA that's complementary to the non-coding strand, i.e. is the same as the coding strand. So um, that's just a, a little fact. So let's say this blue strand is the coding strand. Okay, so the RNA polymerase will have to move along the coding strand and create a piece of mRNA that is complementary to that coding strand. And that mRNA will then go on and make protein. But how does the mRNA bind? Uh, sorry, how, how does the RNA polymerase actually bind to the DNA in the first place? Well, that's what the promoter region is for. The RNA polymerase will come and bind to the promoter region, and then it will make its way along this gene and transcribe it, basically. So the promoter region is really important in controlling the affinity of the RNA polymerase for coming and binding here, and therefore how much of this gene you're going to get um, transcribed, and therefore how much of the gene product of this gene you're actually going to get made. So. What you can have is you can have certain proteins that will come and bind to these promoter regions and alter the affinity of RNA polymerase for that promoter region and therefore um, increase the um, likelihood that the RNA polymerase will bind and transcribe the gene. And if you get more transcription of the gene, you'll get more mRNA. And if you get more mRNA, it follows that you'll also get more protein. Okay, uh, so uh, SMAD4 and... Uh, well, this complex of SMAD2, 3, and SMAD4 is going to come and bind to certain promoter boxes within the genome. And it will increase the expression of those genes which have those promoter boxes upstream of them, basically. Okay, and uh, this is known as the, sh um, the um, SMAD um, response element, basically. Okay, so let me just colour in the SMAD. Okay. or a transforming growth factor beta response element. Okay, right. So, um, there's the blue um, R SHMAD. Here's the orange um, SHMAD4. And then we've got the phosphate group as well. So, um, this will bind to specific promoter regions and increase the likelihood that RNA polymerase will bind to there and therefore increase the transcription of that gene. And the specific promoter regions to which this binds are known as transforming growth factor or TGF um, beta um, response elements, okay? Because those are the um, elements of the genome which are actually going to uh, respond basically when a cell is exposed to transforming growth factor beta. Okay, now what are the target genes? What target genes does uh, the do the SHMAD2 slash 3 SHMAD4 complexes um, affect? Well, two that are really important are the gene encoding the P15 protein and also the gene encoding the P21 protein. So these are both tumor suppressor proteins. So let me call they basically are growth inhibitory. They are, are going to stop the cell cycle, and we're going to see how. So these are tumor suppressor genes. Suppressor genes. So anything that has P at the start of it is a tumor suppressor protein or a tumor suppressor gene. Right. Uh, so uh, you go um, to the genes for P15 and P21, and the promoter regions of those genes are capable of binding this SHMAD23, uh, SHMAD4 complex, basically. And when they, that 
complex does bind, it's going to increase the likelihood that RNA polymerase will bind there and transcribe that gene. So you'll get an increase in the transcription of these two genes and therefore an increase in the expression of these two proteins. And in the next video, what we'll do is talk about what these two proteins do and how they um, stop the cell cycle.